It's 8 a.m. in Indonesia, and Sarimanto is harvesting rattan in the rainforest of Borneo. Depending on the length and thickness, just one pole of exported rattan can cost $35. That's over three times the cost of a similar bamboo pole. And when it's woven into furniture, a rattan chair can cost over $2,000. But to get his hands on rattan, Sarimanto often has to harvest it in difficult and dangerous conditions. So why is rattan so hard to harvest? And is this what makes it so expensive? Rattan is a climbing palm vine that grows on rainforest trees. It flourishes in the tropical climate of Indonesia, which accounts for most of the world's rattan supply. Often, rattan is incorrectly referred to as wicker, which isn't a material, but a style of weaving. Other materials, like bamboo and sugarcane, can also be made into wicker products. Rattan, however, is coveted because it can be bent and manipulated more easily, making it more versatile than the alternatives. But harvesting rattan is tiring and risky. Just after dawn, Sarimanto begins his journey to the rainforest of Borneo by boat, carrying all he needs with him. After an hour's boat ride, Sarimanto arrives at his destination, a plot in the rainforest that his family has owned for decades. Here, he has to figure out which rattan vines are ripe enough to harvest. Kita cari yang yang bagus yang udah tua dia akan hijau gini. Ini yang bagusnya. Kalau yang masih muda itu nggak dipanen. The rattan that's ripe for harvesting now was planted at least seven or eight years ago. If Sarimanto harvests too soon, before the rattan turns green and the outer bark detaches from it, he'll cut into his own profits. Kalaupun yang dipanen itu yang muda atau yang rusak, itu tidak akan laku dijual. When they found the right vines, harvesters use machetes to cut them out of their clumps. But wild rattan has thorns, just like rose stems. So they have to carefully navigate the thorns for their own safety and for the rattan to be sellable. The thorns aren't the only dangerous part of the job, and neither is the boat ride, even during the rainy season. Wild animals are Sarimanto's biggest threat. Karena dia di hutan, banyak nyamuk juga, dan kadang-kadang ada binatang-binatang buas seperti Kalau di kebun itu sering ada ular atau semacam musang atau biawak yang bisa nyerang orang. When he has harvested as much rattan as he can carry, Sarimanto must make the trip back home to prepare the rattan for sale. Hari ini dapat satu galung. Kalau bilang puas ya, ya nggak nggak puas gitu karena. Kita sesuai kemampuan aja, kemampuan uh, tenaga kita, panen. After he returns, Sarimanto soaks the rattan for at least three days, so the skin is easier to peel when it's processed. Raw material is the basis of all rattan goods, but it has to pass through many hands before it can reach its full value. Sarimanto sells his raw rattan to producers like Rusniati, who send workers to pick up the rattan and process it. While Rusniati can buy raw rattan from harvesters like Sarimanto at an affordable rate, she still has the cost of preparing the rattan for weaving. That includes wages for workers and electricity for machinery. Bisa jadi kurang lebih sejutaan mungkin. Those 50 kilos will last her about two to three months. And the costs are even higher for larger producers, who are often located further from the processing sites. That typically requires more transportation and higher expenses, especially during rainy season. If there's flooding, it could take longer to get from the harvesting location to the producers. And these challenging work conditions mean buyers may have to pay the middlemen more. Most importantly, it's crucial that the rattan stay dry. Orang tidak akan bisa panen atau saat banjir uh, karena uh, orang tidak akan bisa panen ke, uh, ke kebun kalau kebunnya banjir. 
Once middlemen collect the raw rattan, they can begin processing it. They treat thinner rattan by placing it in tarps and smoking it with sulfur, while thicker rattan is boiled in oil. This process takes a day or two. Then it's dried in the sun to remove all moisture. That takes another two to three days. Depending on the processing costs, just preparing the rattan can cost half of what Rusniati sells in a month. Ya, mungkin bisa jadi sejuta, mungkin sampai satu bulannya. Rusniati sells small handmade rattan items, such as plates and baskets. She'll price each one at a little over $10 to sell locally. A similar basket sold internationally by a larger retailer can go for over $100. And it's likely they'll sell because the demand for rattan goods is high. Rattan is a multi-billion dollar industry, and the rattan furniture market is anticipated to grow 5% by 2027. But this isn't the first time rattan has been popular. Wicker made with rattan became popular in Europe and the Americas during the Victorian era. The invention of synthetic wicker, which can withstand tougher weather, brought the material back into style in the 1970s. It made another comeback in the late 2010s for its boho aesthetic. But while demand for rattan furniture is increasing, raw rattan harvesters are seeing smaller profits than they have before. Hidupnya dari rotan. Kalau sekarang untuk jaminan hidup dari rotan orang cuman untuk bisa bertahan aja bertahan untuk makan sehari-hari. Kalau untuk kalau dibandingkan dengan dulu orang bisa uh, Nyekolahkan anak, malah dirikan rumah dari rotan. Sardimanto will sell the 70 kilos of raw rattan he harvested for $10. That's 7 cents per kilo. But in the 1980s, raw rattan harvesters were getting 10 times as much for that amount. Sardimanto attributes this loss to a 2011 law passed by the Indonesian government, banning the export of raw or semi-processed rattan to foreign countries. Leading up to the law, Indonesia was dealing with deforestation and overharvesting of rattan, causing supply shortages. The law aimed to prevent exports of raw rattan and benefit domestic producers. It also helped limit how much rattan could be harvested. It was mainly large-scale producers that benefited from this shift, leaving harvesters like Sarimanto struggling to make ends meet. That's why Sarimanto and harvesters like him want the government to change the trade laws and ease their burdens. Itu kita berharap ada kebijakan dari pemerintah. Pemerintah uh, memperhatikan petani rotannya di tingkat bawah karena kita tahu uh, di luar sana informasinya harga rotan cukup mahal.